Mr. Speaker, I have had to speak after several members in my 10 plus years in the Parliament, but never before have I felt it being such a tall order to come on the heels of a presentation like this from the member for Grosily, my friend, Mr. Speaker, and a young man in whom I am exceptionally proud ever since he won his seat very handsomely in Grosily and took his rightful place in this chamber as the duly elected parliamentary rep. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I rise on behalf of the people of Olia, Despin, Gadet, Larissus, Lapel, Denier Rivier, Belmont, Grand Ravine, Richfond, and Grand Rivier, Mr. Speaker. And these communities, when they come together, they constitute the constituency known as Denry North. And the residents of these communities, Mr. Speaker, have stood with me on this journey and in my quest to better lives in the, in the said communities from 2011 up to today. And Mr. Speaker, on three different occasions, they have, on three different occasions, three different elections, lined up outside the various polling stations to repose their confidence in the majority in my ability to articulate their concerns and give expression, Mr. Speaker, to whatever it is they believe can impact them on a national level. And Mr. Speaker, I can tell you from where I stand today, notwithstanding all the utterances from the other side, whenever the member for Castries East and Prime Minister decides to call the next election, I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, that the people of Denry North, without fuss, with very little fanfare, from Baflora to the Bad Lil, the refrain will once again be unambiguous, Sean again. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, there's no better news that can come the way of the United Workers' Party supporters in Denry North than to hear that Sean Edward is retiring and is not contesting elections again. But Mr. Speaker, I have news for them. I am ready for the next election. Yes. I am ready to commence my fourth term in this honorable chamber. But I know the elections might not be on the horizon because we have so much more to fix and we have so much more to do for the people of St. Lucia. And so, Mr. Speaker, I stand on behalf of the people of Denrenov to wholeheartedly support the estimates as presented by the member for Castries East. Mr. Speaker, I remember on the eve of the last general election, 2021, I was the guest on a talk show, Chat and Chill or Chill and Chat. And the question was put to me, why Philip J. Pierre for Prime Minister? And without hesitation, Mr. Speaker, and the tip is there for anybody to review, I responded, he's honest, he's experienced, he has steady hands, he has led some of the most important ministries and departments of government. And Mr. Speaker, in the current environment that confronted our country, he was the best option for St. Lucia and St. Lucians. And so, Mr. Speaker, in the past two and a half years, the Prime Minister and member for Castries East has demonstrated that he is indeed the man for the job. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the estimates of revenue and expenditure and allocations to the various programs across agencies is yet another demonstration, Mr. Speaker, of the astute nature and the financial management acumen that the Prime Minister brings to the job of Prime Ministership. And Mr. Speaker, from a personal standpoint, I have been fortunate to have served on the two Prime Ministers in my political career. And I remember when entering government for the first time in 2011, Mr. Speaker, I served on the member for Viefort South. And for me, Mr. Speaker, every Monday when I took my seat in the cabinet, sitting between the then MP for Sufre, the Honorable Harold Dalso, and the senator responsible in the cabinet for physical development, the Honorable Stanley Felix, 
I used to remark to them very quietly, Mr. Speaker, that I was getting an education that people had to pay thousands of dollars to receive overseas that they referred to as tuition or university education. And so, Mr. Speaker, I learned a lot serving under the member for Viefort South. And today I am blessed and privileged to be serving with a, another Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, who has demonstrated that his demeanor and his posture is predicated on a genuine love and concern for the people of this country. Mr. Speaker, we have a budget of approximately $1.8 billion. And Mr. Speaker, when I look at the agencies under my ministerial watch, I am extremely satisfied and pleased with the figures that have been assigned to my various departments. Mr. Speaker, let us look at the Department of Sustainable Development. This year, or this financial year, the Department of Sustainable Development has been allocated a recurrent amount of $22,497,800 and a capital allocation of $3,344,700, giving us a, an agency total of $25,842,500. Mr. Speaker, a significant amount, as has always been the case for the financing of the Department of Sustainable Development comes from friendly governments and international agencies such as UNEP, UNFCCC, GEF, etc. And on the Sustainable Development, Mr. Speaker, the grants and contributions, there are two agencies in the remit of that department that receive grants from the government of St. Lucia, namely the PMA or the Peter Management Area, which received $300,000, and the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, which gets, Mr. Speaker, an allocation or a grant of $10,639,416. Mr. Speaker, the Department of Education receives a sizable chunk of the national budget. Mr. Speaker, for recurrent expenditure or the recurrent allocation for the Ministry of Education is a whopping $237 million, $230,500. And the capital allocation of $24,661,700, giving the Ministry of Education a total amount of $261,000,000. $892,200. And this figure, Mr. Speaker, accounts for 13.8% of the national budget. And when you combine, Mr. Speaker, the $261 million for education with the $25 million from sustain for sustainable development, the agency, Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training receives 15% of the national budget. And so, Mr. Speaker, the adage is applicable. To whom much is given, much is expected. And so, Mr. Speaker, our government has predicated its programming on a very robust education agenda. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education has received $5,102,900 as an increase in the provision of services. Mr. Speaker, $370,000 for the expansion of the school bus subsidy program. We have also received $589,703 for teacher promotion upgrades and summary and statements for primary and secondary school teachers. $100,000 dollars, Mr. Speaker, for replacement of teachers on study leave with pay. And teachers can only be granted study leave with pay once the memos have been taken to the Cabinet and the Cabinet of Ministers, after having examined the various circumstances presented by the Ministry of Education, Cabinet makes a determination as to whether somebody is deserving of study leave with pay or not. Mr. Speaker, we have in the budget this year an allocation of $65,679 for the appointment of a second vice principal for the Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School. Mr. Speaker, the enrollment at the Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School is sizable. And the performance of this school, Mr. Speaker, particularly in regional examinations, CAPE, 
has been outstanding. And only two weeks ago, we witnessed once again the exploits of the students from the Beaufort Comprehensive Secondary School, school on the tracks at the island champs. And so, Mr. Speaker, we believe that we have to strengthen um, administration and management at that school to enable them to achieve even more than what they have been achieving. Mr. Speaker, there's an allocation of $250,000 for strengthening mathematics instruction in schools because we have a serious problem as it relates to the performances of our students in mathematics exams, both at the local level and at the regional level. Mr. Speaker, we've been allocated $148,398 for the registration of new early childhood centers, one of which will be, Mr. Speaker, established in the Mabuya Valley or the Denry North constituency, if you prefer. Mr. Speaker, the government of the St. Lucia Labour Party between 2011 and 2016, under the NICE program, saw the need to assign assistance to principals of primary schools to help them meet the daily administrative duties that they had to contend with, Mr. Speaker, whilst providing clinical supervision for the teachers um, at the various schools. This year, Mr. Speaker, we are going to reinstate the principal assistance program. But we will resort to a phased approach where in the first instance, Mr. Speaker, with $392,259, we will be, Mr. Speaker, um, reinstating 21 of the, the principal's assistants and we will decide which schools will be um, benefiting from the first tranche of monies received from the Ministry of Finance. And we have 71 schools, Mr. Speaker, and we are only facilitating 21 in the first instance. The Prime Minister is whispering to me, Mr. Speaker, almost to suggest, and I do not want to misquote or misread him, that, yes, he said I can't read his lips, but he's saying that maybe before the financial year is over, he might be able to cover every one of the 71 schools. Mr. Speaker, $221,704 for additional guidance, counseling services, and psychosocial support. Mr. Speaker, our children are troubled. They are disturbed and some are traumatized. And Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister in his wisdom has seen the need to give the Ministry of Education an additional $221,704 for additional guidance counseling services and psychosocial support. Mr. Speaker, $518,040 increase for two years of contribution to the TVET Council. Mr. Speaker, we are extremely big on TVET and a full statement on the TVET program in the Ministry of Education will be made during the debate, um, during the policy debate, which will be held next month. Mr. Speaker, $344,885 for the establishment of a National Accreditation Council, $341,000 for compensation or damages for situations on school compound, insurance and things of that sort, Mr. Speaker, in this year's budget, there is a little more than half a million dollars for payment of arrears to the University of the West Indies Council of Law. And the situation was so bad, Mr. Speaker, having inherited a huge debt to the, Minister, to the University of the West Indies that the UE was saying to the government of St. Lucia, we are not prepared to receive your law students until such time you can sit with us and come to an agreement in terms of how um, the outstanding monies would, would, would have been addressed. Mr. Speaker, we also have in the budget this year $520,000 for an increase in provision for first generation scholarship with Monroe College. And in the policy statement, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker I will be saying more about the first generation scholarship program um, with Monroe College. So, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education, as I said, has received an additional $5,102, Mr. Speaker, for the following services and programs that I just mentioned. Mr. Speaker, with grants and contributions under the Ministry of Education, we provide grants to approximately 42 entities, local and regional, notwithstanding that the responsibility to pay um, subventions and dues 
two regional institutions is in the remit of the Ministry of External Affairs. And so the Ministry of Education, we are working with the CXC, uh, we're also working with the Caribbean Accreditation Authority for Education in Medicine and other health professionals known as CAMHP. On the domestic front, Mr. Speaker, in relation to grants and contributions, Ministry of Education, the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College receives $18,290,164 from the government of St. Lucia. The National Skills Development Center, or NSDC, receives $2,000,000. $887,291. And for facilities fees, Mr. Speaker, on the grants and contributions, the Ministry of Finance has made available to the Ministry of Education $2,358,500. And Mr. Speaker, I'm also happy to report to this Honorable House that the St. Lucia Cadet Corps, and although you will find that line item, Mr. Speaker, under the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, the legislation is clear and the Ministry of Education has been having meetings with the Cadet Corps and I'm happy to report that the Prime Minister in his wisdom, Mr. Speaker, has given the Cadet Corps an additional $26,200 for programming this year. Mr. Speaker, we also have 46 million dollars to spend, Mr. Speaker, as per the estimates Early Childhood Development and Protection, $1.8 million. Major Repairs, Rehabilitation of Schools, Mr. Speaker, $14,195. Mr. Speaker, the EQUIP, which is funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, Education Quality Improvement Project, $3.1 million. Construction of a block at CARE, $109,000. Rehabilitation of NSDC building, 357,000. The Human Capital Resilience Project funded by the World Bank, Mr. Speaker, in this year's estimates, you will notice there is a figure of $16,400,190. ICT integration, $2,117,541. TVET transformation project, $2.3 million. OECS Pearl, $1.3 million. And the PUT, Mr. Speaker, which is really a PUT acronym for Program for Education, Realignment, and Transformation, there is a sum of $900,000 to get the program going. And the PUT is really a continuation of several other programs that the Ministry of Education would have entered with the Caribbean Development Bank over the years. So we have heard of the BIP program. Now we now have EQUIP, Mr. Speaker, and the EQUIP will be succeeded by the PUT. Enhancing school security, that is, school security has been a challenge for the Ministry of Education. And so, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister, Minister for, Minister for Finance, has allocated to the Ministry of Education $1.3 million to enhance school security. The OECS Skills and Innovation Project, $2.3 million. And so, Mr. Speaker, we are looking at a total of $46,644,700 for the programs that I just mentioned. Mr. Speaker, I will resist in the interest of time the temptation to speak in any elaborate way on some of the programs that I have mentioned. And so, Mr. Speaker, it is now time for me to turn my attention to the constituency of Denry North in terms of how $1.8 million under the various heads, billion, $1.8 billion, Mr. Speaker, I'm even more excited, and how that figure across agencies can impact the people of Denry North. And so, Mr. Speaker, I immediately draw your attention to Head 43, Department of Infrastructure, Ports, and Transport. Reconstruction and Rehabilitation of Roads, $2,001,000. Mr. Speaker, I expect our road issues in Denrinov to be addressed during this financial year. And Mr. Speaker, I have on many occasions before come to this chamber, and I have been able to lament the fact that for five years in opposition, Mr. Speaker, I was able to do absolutely nothing in my constituency because the Prime Minister at the time believed it was the right political strategy to employ to deny me, Mr. Speaker. And every time I speak about that, Mr. Speaker, I'm tempted to get emotional that the people of Denry North, Mr. Speaker, they had a right in this democracy to decide who they voting for. They had elected me for the first time in 2011. And based on my performance, 
notwithstanding that on the national level they turned against the St. Lucia Labour Party, but in Denry North, Mr. Speaker, the people expressed their satisfaction with my level of representation and they went into the various polling stations and they elected me as their representative. And when I came in this chamber, Mr. Speaker, to debate budget and I saw figures in the estimates, Mr. Speaker, I had a legitimate expectation that I would have been able to execute projects on behalf of the people of Denry North. Not roads, Mr. Speaker, not school repairs, not CDP. Absolutely nothing was given to me. And today, Mr. Speaker, I have a deficit. And notwithstanding the fact that the Prime Minister has been very kind to Denry North in this term of government, Mr. Speaker, I am just dealing with the deficit even before I can begin to venture in new areas. So with an allocation for road reconstruction and rehabilitation of roads of $2,001,000, Mr. Speaker, I expect a number of roads in Denry North to be addressed. But Mr. Speaker, it will be remiss of me to raise the expectations, rightly so, of my people without placing on the record my gratitude to the Prime Minister and the Minister for Infrastructure for the cemetery road which was constructed, which was rehabilitated um, roughly two or three months ago. Mr. Speaker, as we speak, the Austin Hill Road is under reconstruction, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are a few roads that we all have become familiar with in this chamber. The Austin Hill Road is one of them. The St. Mary Road is one of them, Mr. Speaker, and I don't know who knows where St. Mary Road is. I will leave that to the member for Mikunov. The Laboratory Road, the Katia Road, and those are the roads, Mr. Speaker, we've heard about time and time again being spoken about right here in this chamber. And so today, as we speak, Mr. Speaker, the Austin Hill Road is being repaired, thanks to the St. Lucia Labour Party. But there's a history with the Austin Hill Road. Austin Hill. Mr. Speaker, when the Prime Minister was the Minister for Infrastructure, and we both were working in the cabinet of the member for Viewfort South, we did not have sufficient monies at the time to do the road in its entirety. So we decided that we were going to do the middle portion of the road where it was a bit steep, and vehicles were having difficulty navigating that portion of the road. Banana farmers were cultivating up in Madigua, and shop owners in Upper Austin Hill were having tremendous difficulty, Mr. Speaker, getting their goods and their supplies up that road. And so, with the little that was available, we did the middle portion of the road. The government changed, and so I had a natural expectation that the road had started and that the United Workers' Party government would have completed the road. Mr. Speaker, in applying the Belarus Doctrine, it was clear what they wanted to do. They wanted to leave the road in the state that they found it, hoping that the people of Denry North would have turned against me and that their candidate would have found favor with the electorate in that constituency and they would have gone on to win the election. Mr. Speaker, the era of the country bookie is no more. Our people are more enlightened today and they know that once the St. Lucia Labour Party is in government, Mr. Speaker, their road would have been fixed. And true to form, midway in this term of government, the Austin Hill Road is being repaired. So today, Mr. Speaker, Aiden and his family, they are happy people. Jupi is a happy man today. <laughs> T-Pop is happy today. Brother George, Bebe, Zatola, and even Matida, Mr. Speaker. Matida is happy because you know what? Matida, for the first time in a long time, will get a ride, and she's in her 80s, will get a ride on a road that is properly paved. And she will no longer suffer, Mr. Speaker, having to traverse a bad road because a wicked government decided that she too had to be punished because in the majority, they went to the polls to vote for Sean Edward and the St. Lucia Labour Party. But we're not just stopping, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> we're not just stopping, Mr. Speaker, on the main Austin Hill Road. But in Upper Austin Hill, you have a little enclave that we call Two Marys. And only Sunday, Mr. Speaker, we were there putting the base material, hoping that, Mr. Speaker, when the CDP allocation for the next quarter is unveiled, we will be able to put a concrete surface because that section was not part of the Ministry of Infrastructure project. So, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I am pleased with that allocation. 
the Alemon Road in Grand Riviere. I have had three attempts since I came into government or into politics trying to complete this road. Again, under the member for Viewfort South when he was Prime Minister, and I received my allocation, I was able to do phase one of the Alemon Road in Grand Riviere Denry. Mr. Speaker, during that same term, I attempted phase two. And true to form, the United Workers' Party came into office, and that was the end of the Alemon Road. We have been in government for two and a half years, and we have attempted, Mr. Speaker, to not just attempted, but we have completed phase three. With one phase left, the Prime Minister has assured me, Mr. Speaker, that in this financial year, he will do everything possible. And I see the member for ancillary countries looking at me as if to suggest, subject to the availability of funds, that this particular route will be completed. But Mr. Speaker, we're not just waiting for the Ministry of Infrastructure to make that intervention. Because today, as we speak, there are three contractors doing drainage work on that road being funded by the Constituency Development Program. So by the time the Ministry of Infrastructure is ready to move in, we would have taken care of the drainage, and all they have to do for us is to give us a surface to finish that road where Alemon connects to Ice Baba Shop in Montparnasse, Grand Rivier. Mr. Speaker, Lower Olean Combined School, still on the head 43, infrastructure line item recon re reconstruction and rehabilitation of roads. Mr. Speaker, Lower Olean Combined School, that road has been in a deplorable state for some time. And I must tell you, Mr. Speaker, the calls come ever so often from Mrs. Marcella Hobson, who happens to be a resident. And recently I had to tell her, Marcella, I was not given anything for five years, so you have to bear with me. But Mr. Speaker, you know what we've done just to provide immediate relief? We have been able to mobilize with the Ministry of Infrastructure to get the grader that is currently in Canals. As soon as the grader is finished in Canals, it will be up in Olion next to the school to provide immediate relief. And thereafter, we will look, Mr. Speaker, to pave the road um, lower the Olion Combined School. So that Mrs. Hobson will be a happy lady. Yvonne, who lives in that area, will be a happy lady. And Alfia, Mr. Speaker, Obi's mom, who's originally from Grand Rivier, she too will have a good road to traverse. And they would, Mr. Speaker, once and for all, say goodbye to the deplorable conditions that they've had to put up with. Mr. Speaker, I'm lady that when two quarter up where a budget la la nesa la, la ni million dollars. Et ça va tout l'argent nous qui dépenser le chemin. Mais ça l'argent ça qu'a dit nous gouvernement caigne un programme que yo caigne un chemin. Et ben il a fait point en plus bonnet. Comme Mr Speaker, l'aime taper électé par Jean Denis Renoff. Moi t'ai ni en la foi dat ben kay ça fait chemin en constituency moi. Même si en élection 2016, le parti perd élection. Mais moi gagne élection en Denis Renoff. Et que je me que je suis venu ici si à comment parlement et le gouvernement qui a mis l'argent pour faire projet, je suis venu en droit pour jouer contre tout le monde. Et puis, ce monde qui est bon en ce veille, qui a été bien, Mr. Speaker, qui a été bien, c'est comme ça ici, vous avez Mais même parlement pour Mikou Sauf, là, c'était Premier ministre. Il prend en position, pièce l'autre Premier ministre, c'est ici, bah, je mets point. Dans des pays où c'est en même opposition, même si vous avez un citoyen élection, il va avoir une pièce de qualité d'assistance, pas chimé. Par EP Health Center, par l'école, rien qu'on a fait un projet en communauté. Et vous savez pourquoi ils ont fait ça, Mr. Speaker? Parce qu'ils ne sont pas là, ils ne sont pas là. C'est les gens qui sont qui ont tourné contre tout. Et que l'élection, ils ont voté par les EP candidats. Mr. Speaker, ils ne sont pas là encore. Je ne sais pas si vous avez fait un parti en gouvernement, et puis Sean Edward au Parlement, ils ont joué un prix de la vie, ils ont jamais joué un gouvernement flambeau. And that is why I am happy. So, je dis à quoi nous parlons, Mr. Speaker. Si je mets en l'émon Austin, qui a tapé fait, et que vous pouvez depuis Madigua, il y a un ministre qui a fait un métro. Et que je dis plus bon, nous avons déjà fait un tchou. Là, nous sommes en gouvernement um, entre l'année 2011 et puis 2016. Mr. Speaker, en l'émon Grand Rivière, je dis que je mets ça qui a tapé fait l'année ça, que nous avons pris en l'émon et nous avons mené en l'émon Panache, Bob Baba Shop Ice. Nous avons aussi fait chemin à um, l'école d'Espin. Et, M. le Président, le stretch of road that Larry Sous, que beaucoup de personnes réfèrent à la stretch de Mambro. 
this long stretch of road off the Richmond Highway, which takes you into Larissus, flanked by bananas on either side. Mr. Speaker, this is the most patched road in St. Lucia. I can no longer accept patches. Don't talk about the Fiji road here. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister and I have had a discussion about this road. I have spoken to the Minister for Infrastructure about this road. And the plan is we are going to widen this particular stretch of road by one meter in the direction of the mango trees that served at one time as a windbreak for the bananas that were cultivated in that valley. Drains will be concreted from the car wash all the way to the lapel intersection, Mr. Speaker. And I'm hoping that at the end of it, we will get a brand new Baba Green surface. Baba Green as thick as what is on the Venus Road in the ancillary Cadre's <laughs> constituency. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Rich for Ring Road and Selma Levi Johnson Lynette, Pastor Alfred, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am inundated with phone calls and requests. Mr. Speaker, the road has been in a deplorable condition for a long time. And this is one of the routes I was hoping I would have been able to do, Mr. Speaker, between 2016 and 2021. But as I have indicated before, I was given absolutely no assistance. And so, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> so, Mr. Speaker that road is still in a deplorable state. Mr. Speaker, let me draw your attention. And there's so many other routes. Barflora Road, Twafwe Road, and a number of routes which I will probably revisit when I speak to um, the allocation on the... The, the constituency development program. Mr. Speaker, Head 41, Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development. A budget plan on this, new well and line item, you can create banana management unit. A unit that has been a people with $1 million to guide as a fair administration fig. Mr. Speaker, ces femmes a déjà répondu nous, les nous dit où aller pour des plus Mais on a une situation où on est en train de faire la panne de la fraîche encore. Et nous tous savons qui est en train de faire la et qui est en train de faire la fraîche disparaître. Le gouvernement qui est là, le gouvernement Flambeau, a une cause de la fraîche pour disparaître pour les femmes qui sont en train de manager les affaires de la fraîche. Mr. Speaker, je sais que mes femmes continuent à travailler sur les bananes de la and every single opportunity that Laura gets, and Paulie gets, and the other farmers get, Mr. Speaker, they continue to, to, to explain to me some of the challenges that they are having as it relates to marketing. But I'm extremely confident, Mr. Speaker, that given some of the measures that will be disclosed in the policy debate, that our banana farmers will begin to see light in their business, Mr. Speaker, once again. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information Head 46. The line item community tourism. An allocation of $3.3 million. Mr. Speaker, this is welcome news for the people of Denry North. We in the Denry Basin, Mr. Speaker, are beginning to benefit directly from the tourism pie. And only recently, Mr. Speaker, I had discussions with two young constituents who expressed interest in setting up an ATV tour in the Mabuya Valley. And today, Mr. Speaker, without putting out their business or giving them a free advertising plug, I can tell you that they are at a very advanced stage, working very closely with the Ministry of Tourism. So, Brendan, most persons know as Ampa, and Elias Ford, Mr. Speaker, are two of the individuals who would have expressed interest. But there's so much more that we can get from community tourism. But in the interest of time, Mr. Speaker, I will confine my comments and contribution to Head 46 to the fact that I'm extremely pleased that young persons from the Mabuya Valley are benefiting directly from that particular tourism allocation. Mr. Speaker, Head 47, Department of Physical Development and Urban Renewal. Land administration, $7.5 million. Mr. Speaker, land administration, and I should also tie that with line item, Mr. Speaker, proud, for which $3 million um, has been allocated. Mr. Speaker, Olio is one of the most affected communities in this entire country, 
as it relates to land rationalization and land administration. Olio has some of the most expensive houses on the east coast of St. Lucia. But the people do not have title to the land. And homes constructed to the tune of half a million dollars, Mr. Speaker, cannot be used as collateral. They can't go to the bank, Mr. Speaker, to borrow to send their children to school. And I have a particular constituent who has been at me, and justifiably so, Mr. Wilfred Wells, who most persons know as Manton. He has a very impressive structure, Mr. Speaker, probably costing or worth more than a, mil <coughs> more than a million dollars, but he does not have title to the land. And, and the sooner, Mr. Speaker, the sooner we can rationalize the land situation in Olio to give people title, the better. Mr. Speaker, during this financial year, I intend on working very closely with personnel from the Department of Physical Development and Urban Renewal and more specifically, Mr. Speaker, personnel from PROUD that will be statutorized to ensure that the people of Olio get the, the relief that they so um, richly deserve. Mr. Speaker, let us turn our attention to Head 21, Office of the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I am extremely pleased to see the distress fund as a line item. 1.6 million dollars. I remember during my first term in government, Mr. Speaker, there's a gentleman in Belmont, or who lives in Belmont by the name of Shat, William O'Culley. It was a Saturday morning when Shat, a name that has evoked a smile from the member of Euford North, Shat left his home in Belmont and he went to the garden. He left three or four of his grandchildren at home, Mr. Speaker. And at about 11 o'clock, he got a phone call that his house was on fire. By the time he made it from the garden in Upper Danavia to Belmont, the house was completely destroyed. And Mr. Speaker, when I approached him, he was inconsolable. And it's not often that you see a big man from Denry North crying, Mr. Speaker. But there are some parts of this country where you see them crying on demand. But Shad had a legitimate reason to be crying on that Saturday morning. I approached the then Prime Minister, knowing that there was a distress fund. And all he said to me, Mr. Speaker, was that I needed to come with a fire report to justify that there was a fire and an assessment um, from the fire department. And in very quick time, a check of $20,000 was issued, Mr. Speaker, to Shat, and shortly thereafter, he was able to be back on the a roof with his grandchildren, thanks to the work of the St. Lucia Labour Party. But what happened when the government changed? As a line item in the budget, the distress fund disappeared. Mr. Speaker, keep the money, sir, Aquil. Lani Abai, we a budget like Aquil, Distress fund. A distress fund, a two company is a more power distress here. Time when you have to have a difficulty. A two casma, a bit difficulty as having any nipot mania. It's an accident, it's a defect. A premier minister to pass a man parliament pour vieux fort. It's a meter of a jet la la nutia government in the new Kusaka queer distress fund. A can normal constituency when shot Kawite Belmont, tout mon connaît plus. Kali tape brûlé. Et puis nous devons jouer un papier, hors département du fait, pour dire oui, la tenir du fait, et puis comme un bagage nomme la paix, nous devons jouer un check balé, et qui est ça, bâti Kaili encore. And throughout the length and breadth of this country, Mr. Speaker, listen to the news, Mr. Speaker, there is always a little situation where somebody's little structure has gone up in flames. Sometimes they are at work at the hotel, sometimes they are in church, sometimes they are down the road. And in quick time, Mr. Speaker, the plywood or, 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 or the board, the mahogany, would go up in flames. And these people have no insurance, Mr. Speaker. What do you say to them? What did the former administration do? Mr. Speaker, they said we were encouraging a culture of mendicants by programming for these people. So today, when I see the distress fund being reinstated in the manner that the Prime Minister and Member for Castries is has reintroduced it. Mr. Speaker, I feel that I'm a, I am an empowered parliamentary rep because Kerry Abbott from Daniel Riviere, better known as Ribina, 
He had a house, yes, we have, a, we have some very expensive names in Dead North. And not only do we have names, we can, we can christen people too, so you have to be careful. And his house, Mr. Speaker, was destroyed by fire. Mr. Speaker, as we speak today, a check belonging to the, government, uh, the Accountant General has been written so that Ribena Kerry Abbott can be compensated. And early next week, Mr. Speaker, he will receive his check for an amount that I don't wish to disclose right now. <laughs> I hope he doesn't use it to drink Ribena. <laughs> but that is what we're about, Mr. Speaker. A government that can create an enabling environment for billionaires to come in and invest. And Mr. Speaker, by the same token, we can meet every solution at their level, understanding that they have a role in the society. Mr. Speaker, not only fire, Ava Joseph of Denia Rivier, she migrated to the Virgin Islands to work in the hospitality industry. And she just kept on saving her money, saving her money, saving her money. Mr. Speaker, she was able to build a house in Denia Rivier. Lo and behold, it was close to the river, river bank. And Mr. Speaker, we had a landslide that has threatened to compromise the young lady's structure. The Ministry of Infrastructure has made the assessment, but it is taking a while for that to be addressed. It is my intention, Mr. Speaker, as early as Tuesday of next week, given that Monday is a holiday, for me to write to the Prime Minister to see what form of compensation she can get or support she can get under the, the distress fund. And I believe it is a legitimate request, Mr. Speaker, having examined the... Mr. Speaker, I, I noticed the member for Miku North is beginning to chuckle. Um, I have not requested a jetty, and I don't know what he's nervous about. But, Mr. Speaker, I will formally write to the Prime Minister to see if she can be assisted under the, the distress fund. Mr. Speaker, perhaps the most exciting of all the heads of expenditure in this year's estimates for the people of Denrinov. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs. And there is a line item, Mr. Speaker, Larissa's Health Center Reconstruction Project. Right. And as I peruse the estimates, the technocrats in the Ministry of Finance, working with the Minister for Finance and the Minister in the Ministry of Finance, are saying that it will cost the government of St. Lucia $1.1 million to completely reinstate the Larry Seuss Health Center. Mr. Speaker, today, the 27th of March, 2024, and according to your watch, at 12 minutes to 4 o'clock, there are workmen at the Larry Seuss Health Center reinstating the Larry Seuss Health Center. But there's a story to be told about the Larry Seuss Health Center. Mr. Speaker, no, they're not working half day today. <laughs> they're working the entire day. That's right. The Larissa's Health Center was destroyed by fire, Mr. Speaker, or damaged by fire in 2014. The St. Lucia Labour Party was in government. Mr. Speaker, I approached the then Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. And in the estimates of 2015, Mr. Speaker, there was a line item in the budget for the reinstatement of the Larry Seuss Health Center. But because the elections came and the St. Lucia Labour Party had to leave office, Mr. Speaker, the member for Mikud South, he took the allocation out of the budget. Completely, he didn't say, well, okay, we will look at it the following year. For five years, like in Creole, Gavini, but all right. For five years, Mr. Speaker, he did not see the need after he had taken it out in the first year to reinstate the amount for the Larry Seuss Health Center. Mr. Speaker, today, the Larry Seuss Health Center is being reconstructed. But I will say more about the Larry Seuss Health Center in terms of the services that will be provided. Lady Faye Detri, Health Center Larry Seuss, Government Labor, Tear Power. Ministre qui donne une responsabilité pour finance et que c'était premier ministre, même par le moment pour vieux fort. Il mettait l'argent en dit dans le budget là pour nous abattre Health Center à vieux, parce que ça c'est Health Center qui a un bail service pour mon Olion Despin, Gardette, la ressource, l'appel de l'évier Belmont, et puis Jaguar Vin qui a vint là tout. Mais nous savons qu'ils ont fait, M. Speaker. Puis, il n'y a pas de élection. Le premier ministre là vini, premier ministre qui dit à l'instant, leader Flambeau, il tient l'argent budget là, à quoi pour dire, je ne pas vous ça, 
because during election you are a you vote by the Central Labour Party. But Mr. Speaker, I hope, I hope those of us who are aspiring to continue in the politics and to contest elections are learning from that. Mr. Speaker, there is only one form of compensation for political wickedness. You will lose. You will lose. And those who are following bad company, Mr. Speaker, and I will come to that in a while, because there's one on the other side who can't seem to understand that she did not win the seat in Denry North. And I have no difficulty with she referring to Denry North with her um, referring to Denry North as her constituency, you know, Mr. Speaker. That is the place of her birth. But in terms of who has legitimacy to come and stand in this chamber and speak on behalf of the people, Mr. Speaker, that is my responsibility. That's right. I did not give it to myself. It was the people of Denry North in the majority who have, on three occasions, decided that they want me to come and speak on their behalf. That's right. So when you see aspiring politicians following bad company, and they've been given a political lifeline by putting them in the Senate. And they cannot tell the people of Denry North what it is that they can do for them. And instead, they want to engage in conversations about ministers' account. Mr. Speaker, we will account for the time before my 60 minutes or my time on, on, on my feet um, is up. So, Mr. Speaker, as I said, work is ongoing. We will as I've been told by the Minister for Health and his team, see a full reinstatement of the Larissa's Health Center in this um, calendar year 2024 with additional services, dental services. So, ce pas qu'on entend si a moun a den renov ou an vali a tenia mal dan, ou ni pou pou yon raid pou alen a gap la, ou ni pou pou yon bus a le highway a, ek le meo a te a le highway a on pou machay l'hôpital den renov we are having dental services at the Larry Sous Health Center. And there are so many other services, but we will talk about those at some other time. So no longer will I see elderly people from Gadet and Olio and Despin standing by the highway in the hot sun waiting for a shuttle. Mr. Speaker, the catchment area for the Larry Sous Health Center is such that the people can move from their homes to the facility without much hassle. Mr. Speaker, I want to turn my attention or your attention to Head 48, Ministry of Housing and Local Government. The National Housing Assistance Program, $2.1 million. Mr. Speaker, I will not tell this Honorable Chamber how many houses we've built, how many we have repaired. Experience has taught me that much. What I will say instead, Mr. Speaker, is Member that... For January, yes, you have 15 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what I will say is that we have assisted a number of families. And Mr. Speaker, you have to see on social media, as I've attempted to communicate to the national population, the deplorable condition in which people live in this country. And when I reflect, Mr. Speaker, that not too long ago in this country, people were living in such squalid and deplorable conditions. And in a country like this, you had $112 million being spent on horses. Exactly. On horses? How can that be right, Mr. Speaker? Where is the conscience that goes with that? But, Mr. Speaker, we will continue to work in the interests of our people. And very recently, Mr. Speaker, a name that has resonated um, in this chamber before, Joseph Kelly, better known as Vaz. He, Mr. Speaker, lived in conditions that were not the best. And we took a decision at the level of the constituency council and asked parliamentary rep, and we decided that we were making an intervention in his life. And today, Mr. Speaker, I may not have had as many constructed as my friend from the South. Uh, the, and my comments about, about, about those, I rather leave for the cabinet room. But what I can tell you is that in Joseph Kelly's house, Mr. Speaker, we have shown the rest of the constituency and by extension, some solutions, what our government is about. That is how you empower people, Mr. Speaker. That is how you exhibit and you express care. That is how you show compassion to people. And again, Mr. Speaker, this is what we mean when we say we are putting people first. So, Kai Vazla, Habiefet, Akainef, Yabiefet, Iwe, 
avec le vase, le cabassé, Mr. Speaker, et après-midi, il y a un balcon qui a été juste là. Parce qu'il comprend que la ligne est Ça, c'est un homme. Vous avez fait pour, 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 pour l'État, Mr. Speaker En fonction de il a tiré les gens là au moins. Et que les flambeaux ont tué le gouvernement. Et je ne sais pas comment les gens attendent à défendre ça. Quand ils venaient au gouvernement, ils fire un barrier assistant. Mais beaucoup de gens qui ont advoqué pour le barrier, ils ont tiré certains d'entre eux, littéralement. C'est ce que nous sommes, M. Speaker. M. Speaker, quand vous regardez le nombre de familles et de gens qui ont eu assistance de l'Office de la Parlementaire européenne d'Henri Nord, profilez les gens, M. Speaker. You will see an almost equal number of United Workers Party supporters as Labour Party supporters. Look at the children from Denry North who are going to university on scholarships, Mr. Speaker. United Workers Party families are benefiting because we understand that education is not something you should use in any discriminatory way. So that when I empower a child who is from a United Workers Party household, Mr. Speaker, I am empowering somebody who will want the rise to a leadership position to make the valley and by extension St. Lucia a better place. But no, Mr. Speaker, on the other side, it is always a politics of cut through. Mr. Speaker, Department of Youth, Economy and Economic Development, CDP, $22 million. Mr. Speaker, I said here, Kimberly Sapio, but the cast is a Chesla. Comment dire fort qu'à assise pour le moment, les moteurs opposition. Et puis ça serait moi assise là pour sept lundi. Et tous les lundis, oui, n'est-ce pas? Parce que vous avez un sous tout est. Mais ça se dit pour sept lundi, moi assise là. Et mais gardez au car c'est pas où est projet qu'a venu boss qu'a fait présentation dans les PowerPoint pour qui ça y a joué, qui ça y a café et puis l'argent. Et tous les lundis, mais qu'à quoi? Well, the next year, but no, because the election just passed. The next year, no, I join. Then we're going to the next year. We're pretty big on party. Third year, the next, ah yeah. Fourth year, the next, we're going to be there. You saw the election, we're going to be there. 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 Payons Saxima, moi je les ai achetés. Payons Chitty One Eleven Play, tu t'es dans tu t'es, moi je les ai achetés. Parce qu'ils ne vont pas me donner. Et nous rions, ce n'est pas un joke. Les gens de Denry North ne devraient pas être fait pour souffrir parce qu'ils ont voté pour moi. C'est leur droit. Et les gens viennent ici, M. Speaker, et posture, et font que ce n'est pas un joke. Ils ont toutes les solutions et les idées. Et ceux qui doivent dénoncer, qui disent qu'ils ne sont pas comme leader, laissent leur voix. Be heard, Mr. Speaker, in denouncing that wrong. But I'm happy when I know that this Prime Minister from Castries East ensures that there is equity in the distribution of state resources. So that the people of Monsio in Chozel, the people of Diga and Lacoville in Mikusau, they can have legitimate expectations that their rep will deliver for them because we are the government in office today as was the case when the Central Labour Party was in government between 2011 and 2016. Mr. Speaker, the Department, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports had 54. Mr. Speaker, we have said time and again that we are committed to upgrading... Member enough, you have 10 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are committed to upgrading sporting infrastructure in this country. And recently, Mr. Speaker, as a government, we guaranteed a loan to the national, for the National Lottery Authority to embark on sporting infrastructure upgrade. And naturally, Mr. Speaker, whatever is debated in the, upper, in the lower house is also usually debated in the lower house. And I could not help, Mr. Speaker, but follow the debate in the upper house, where the loan guarantee for the National Lottery Authority was being discussed, and a political misfit, Mr. Speaker, decided to join the debate. Consistent with her utterances in the parliament and elsewhere, Mr. Speaker, you should have heard the diatribe. You should have heard, Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the classlessness that came out of the presentation. No substance. And at the time when you're supposed to come and tell people 
how much of an alternative you can be to Sean Edward. You want to talk about minister's account because you are a puppet. And people who went down that same road, they suffered the consequences. But you have become a mouthpiece, Mr. Speaker, where you're not even in charge of your own political faculties, but you're going to come here and talk. And she has no shame because she wants to come and present documents to the parliament to make it seem, Mr. Speaker, as if I had done something untoward and I was a crook. But let me tell you what happened. When I went into the Ministry of Education, during the first week, I asked the senior personnel, PS and DPS, to give me a status report on work currently happening in schools. And we went into the field and I have my report. So I went to the Rich for Combined School. Let me see who the contractors are. And there's a column for comments, contractors recommended by Ferrer. So I asked, who's Ferrer? Yes. I am the parliamentary rep, but Ferrer is, and Mr. Speaker, I'm not, this is not something I'm making up, you know. Yes, I know you would have. Contractors recommended by Ferrer. You've never won an election. You're never a minister, but you're recommending contractors on behalf of the Ministry of Education. Mr. Speaker, Valton Building Supplies Limited. After we came into government, I went into the CDP office and they've given me a long list of materials procured. Denry North Constituency Development um, CDP account. And I've told you before, I never saw a dollar of CDP. But here was the individual who wants to paint me as what I'm not. Where did she get the authority? Where did she get the authority? But that's what you do. When your own candidacy is under threat, and there's nothing more disconcerting than when people can eyeball you and tell you they no longer want you. They're not voting for you. You have no political relevance. You're Pavlo. And you believe the best thing to do is to try and take me on. Gone onto a platform in Mac and wanted to associate the death of an elderly man to our election victory. And Mr. Speaker, I just, as I would have done in my cricket days, I picked up the line and I allowed that to go by into the keeper's gloves. But that should never be interpreted to mean that I'm weak or I cannot respond. I know my brand. The people of Denrinov know me. And if you want to engage in constructive debate with me about taking the valley forward, if you want to challenge the fact that we have never had more young people from Denrinov attending university and grabbing higher educational opportunities than today, let us have a conversation. But you want to talk about man's death? You want to come and enter conversation about minister's account? Mr. Speaker, I know who I am, you know. The people of Denrinov know who I am. And I have said time and again, all you have to do, after a Bajan lawyer was paid more than a quarter million dollars to investigate me, Mr. Speaker, the day they can come and show one dollar that cannot be accounted for, and one dollar that was not spent in conformity with the National Lodges Authority Act, which states it must be spent on youth development and sports. Come and get me. You know what we did? I was tired seeing children putting their nails in the dirt at track meets, Mr. Speaker, and we bought track shoes for them. Yes. Makiba Alcid cannot be yes. vying for qualification at the Rio Olympics. Yes. And while she's in America, Mr. Speaker, yes, the landlord is chasing her for rent money. How can she focus? I caused the lotteries to pay the rent for her. Mm -hmm. And when Julian left Hess and went to St. Catherine High in Jamaica, yes, we caused it to happen. And when Laverne Spencer in Helsinki, Norway, doesn't have the support personnel that Shanti Lowe and the other Americans had, we caused it to happen. Right. And for that, I'm supposed to feel sorry? You proud, my brother. I'm supposed to. Tell them, challenge me. Challenge me on the work that I've done. But you know what it is? That has their style. Go after my character. They can never debate me on performance as a politician, as a rep, or as a minister. Never. They cannot do it. But Remember, they could. you have so, five minutes left. How many? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So when people who have no political relevance, I know what is sad about it, when this has been done, Mr. Speaker, the women of this country have come from too far. There are too many women in leadership position. That match, forward match by the women of our country is too real, too potent, and too profound to have despots like that coming and trying to bring on the average. Go in your section and get out of it. This is not for you. Yeah, preach. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, but there will be time to deliver that. Yes. And let me say here today, do not interpret my silence or me not wanting to respond to certain things as being weak. I'm not weak. 
and wake you up. I am proud of the work I did in the Ministry of Youth I am proud. So don't come with Minister's account foolishness. Mr. Speaker, coincidentally, we will be hosting the Jean Pierre Netball competition in a couple of days. Mr. Speaker, when I was the Minister for Youth Development and Sports, we hosted Jean Pierre. And I slapped the letter. Who signed the letter to, see, to Lottery's authority to pave the VG Sports Complex? It wasn't me. It wasn't me. And tell them, any day they can come with a check with my signature from National Lottery's, I'm going to resign the following day. Any time they can come with one contract issued by the Lottery's authority where my signature is on it, I'm going to leave the following day. Foolishness. They have nothing to talk about. Devoid of substance. Politically lost. And the easy thing to do is let's target this one and target this one. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. I can take them on, Mr. Speaker. But you know what? I have to keep my cool. My work in Denrenov is not done yet. I have a lot to do for this country and for Denrenov. I have 26,000 school children interested in my care. And every day I wake up, Mr. Speaker, I ask myself, Will this action of yours, what reaction will it trigger from the children of this country? Mr. Speaker, I support the estimates as presented by the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, ours is a working government. Mr. Speaker, ours is a government that puts people first. And let me say in this chamber <laughs> that it is incumbent on us to protect the victory. There's nothing they hate more than hearing us say we're protecting the victory. We have to protect the victory. We are protecting the victory to ensure that they will not pull the laptop program from our children. We are protecting the victory because we do not want monies to be spent on horses while hospitals are being neglected. We are protecting the victory because people will not be paying for ambulance fees, paying ambulance fees anymore. That is why we're pro protecting the victory. So when they come, Mr. Speaker, no ideas, same old day couché. And, and coming with all kind of tricks, wow. hollow tricks. Wow. Go and play with dogs. What an antique. Can I pay show about she me? Petties. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the people of Denrinov, I support the estimates. Yes, sir. I rest my case. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.